Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going through a problem of the week for this week. Uh, for the full problem of the week uh, problem and the solution transcription, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So today's problem of the week involves a, a uh, second order differential equation. And the problem was, the problem asks you to solve the following differential equation using the Laplace transform and the given initial conditions. So this problem is just a standard application of the Laplace transform, which I'll go through here. I am going to assume for the purposes of this video that the viewer is familiar with the Laplace transform and is fluent with how, with how um, to execute it on a problem like this. OK, so we're going to use, I'm going to just take the Laplace transform of every single one of these terms. And just to save a few steps, I'm going to utilize the linearity of the Laplace transform to be able to take the Laplace transform of each of these individual terms and bring the constants outside of the front as follows. So I take the Laplace transform of y double prime, which is just this, minus 5 times the Laplace transform of y prime. Um, I'm going to run out of space. Run out of space here. Um, plus 6 times the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of 0. OK, so I just did a couple steps there at once. I took the Laplace transform of each term, as I said I was going to. And I used the linearity of the Laplace transform to be able to bring the constant outside of the front. So now, using the definition of the Laplace transform, um, which is an integral formula from which these uh, derivative, derivatives are defined, um, I'm now going to get rid of this Laplace transform and write down um, what, it, what it equates to, which is s squared times capital Y, which is going to be the integral of y, uh, little y, um, y s minus s times little y, trying to make this obvious that this is a big Y here, um, s times little y of 0 minus y prime of 0, little y prime, uh, minus 5 times the quantity s times big Y, s minus little y at 0. And then at the very end, we add on 6 times big Y of s. And the Laplace transform of 0 is just going to be 0. So just put equals 0 right there. OK, so now we have these initial conditions up here, as you have previously noted. So I'm going to plug in the initial conditions here to simplify and get rid of these little y's. So um, y of 0 is just 1. So this here is going to go to 1. y prime of 0 is negative 1. Um, and then y of 0 again here is 1. So I'll rewrite this on the line below here for clarity. So we have, um, I'll actually move this over a little bit, so I have room to write it on one line. OK. s squared times big Y of s minus s times 1 is just s minus a negative 1 is plus 1 um, minus, and I'm going to distribute the 5 over here, so I'll do that in one step. So minus 5 s big Y of s. And then negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 plus 6 times y of s equals 0. OK. So now I'm going to collect together all of the terms that have a big Y of s in them and leave them on the left side, and then move all the other terms that do not have a big Y of s over to the right-hand side. So we're left with s squared times big Y of s minus 5s y of s plus 6y of s equals. So we have 1 plus 5 over here, which will give us 6. So we have negative s plus 6. And we're bringing that over to the other side. So we're going to have positive s minus 6. So in the next step here, what we're going to do is I'm going to 
you notice how all of these over here have a like term, which is big Y of s. So I'm going to bring the Y of s out of the front. Uh, so I'm going to basically factor out the Y of s and then leave the remaining terms here. So out of the front, we have Y of s. And then on the inside, we have the remaining terms. So s squared minus 5s plus 6. And then on the right-hand side here, we just bring over the s minus 6. OK, so I'm going to erase this up here. OK, so in the next step here, you have two options. And it doesn't matter uh, what order you do them in. Um, so you can either factor this first and then divide it out, or divide it and then factor. Um, I'm just going to divide and then factor um, because I think, it's, I think it's easiest to just get this all over to the right-hand side all at once. So now we're left with, on the right-hand side, y of s equals dividing everything out. So we have s minus 6 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, s squared minus 5s plus 6. So now we can factor this out uh, on the bottom. So we have this equals to keeping the same on the top, s minus 6. And then the factorization of s squared minus 5s plus 6 is going to be s minus 3 times s minus 2. So now what we need to do, so we have here on the left-hand side big Y of x. And what we need to find is little y of x. So in order to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. And by both sides, I mean we still have a big Y of s over here. So now I'm going to take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. So inverse Laplace transform of Y of s equals inverse Laplace transform s minus 6 over s minus 3 quantity, s minus 2 quantity. OK. So now what we need to do here over on the right-hand side is we notice that we have no known formula to be able to find, to be able to quickly find all in one step the inverse Laplace transform of this over here. So you may notice this as a classic case of a, as a function or a fraction that is begging to uh, have a partial fraction decomposition. So now, um, in the partial fraction decomposition, the goal of the partial fraction decomposition is to turn this one fraction into two fractions. So in other words, you want to find an A and a B, in this case, such that A over S minus 3 plus B over S minus 2 equals S minus 6 over S minus 3 times S minus 2. So I'm just going to go up here now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get a common denominator here. So I'm going to, going to multiply a times s minus 2 and b times s minus 3. And I'm going to set it equal to the numerator here. So just writing that out, we have a times s minus 2 plus b times s minus 3 equals s minus 6. So I just equated the numerators, as I said. So now I'm just going to multiply out the a and multiply out the b. So now we have as minus 2a plus bs minus 3b equals s minus 6. So now I'm going to group together to solve for a and b. I'm going to group together all of the terms that have an s and all of the terms that do not have an s and set them equal to the coefficients. So the terms that do have an s are as and bs. So the coefficients of that, we have a plus b. And then the coefficient of this is just 1. So then all of the terms that do not have an s are going to be negative 2a minus 3b equals negative 6. So um, to solve this system of equations, I'm first just going to solve for a and then plug it in over here. So we have a is equal to 1 minus b. And then plugging this in right there, we have negative 2 um, times a, which is 1 minus b, minus 3b equals negative 6. 
So I'm going to multiply out the negative 2. So we have negative 2 plus 2b minus 3b equals negative 6. So 2 minus 3b is going to be negative b, and then negative 6 plus 2 is going to be negative 4. Therefore, we have b equals 4. And because we had a equals 1 minus b, we know that b is equal to 4. So 1 minus 4 is equal to negative 3. So now we know also that a equals negative 3. OK, so I'm going to come back over here. I'm actually going to erase this and rewrite it. Um, Okay, so um, I will just rewrite what we had before. Um, so you have the inverse Laplace transform of y of s equals, um, in fact, I'll erase all of this over here as well, except for a and b. A and B just on the side over there. Um, so the inverse Laplace transform of Y of S is equal to inverse Laplace transform. And we had up here S minus 6 over S minus 3 times S minus 2. And we know now that this is equal to inverse Laplace transform of, using inver the linearity of the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform, um, inverse Laplace transform of negative 3 over, um, over s minus 3 plus uh, inverse Laplace transform of 4 over s minus 2. Oh, inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so I'm now going to bring the constants to the outside. So we have negative 3 times inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 plus 4 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2. And now we're in business, because we know that this is a well-defined inverse Laplace transform. And anything of the form, of this form, s minus, s minus on the bottom, is going to be e. So anything of the form 1 over um, s minus c, where c is a constant, is going to be of the form, the inverse Laplace transform of this is going to be equal to e to the c t. Therefore, we can just bring this over and say, this is equal to negative 3 times e to the 3 t plus 4 times e to the 2 t. And there we have our final answer. So as you can see, using the inverse Laplace transform is a very uh, fast, oftentimes much more efficient way to solve differential equations of a form just like this in a way that doesn't require you to use a uh, method of undetermined coefficients or anything else like that, which maybe kind of gets ugly and it gets easy to make mistakes. OK. So for more Problem of the Week videos, you can see our Problem of the Week playlist here. Uh, for more math videos, you can subscribe to us on YouTube by clicking here. And for more math content and to see our affordable textbooks, visit us at centerofmath.org. Thank you for watching.